University Models for Research Identifiers. Remarks by Deanna Markham at the 160th ARL Membership Meeting, convened by Lorraine Harrycomb. Welcome to this session um, titled University Models for Research Identifiers. I'm Lorraine J. Harrycomb, Dean of the Libraries at University of Kansas. And I'm pleased to introduce to you this morning Deanne Markham, who likely doesn't need any introduction to any of us, um, a colleague that we all know very well. In her role as Managing Director for Ithaca S Plus R, Deanna is uh, with us this morning to talk about Ithaca's work with ORCID to determine an acceptable business model to, to the university community. Um, there will be time at the end of Deanna's presentation for questions and discussion. And um, I think we're ready to go right into the session, if that's okay with Deanna. Good, Thanks. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I, um, I would prefer standing out there, but I think it's hard to hear in this room, particularly with the background noise, so I'll, I'll stand behind this uh, barrier, and forgive me. Um, I had been at Ithaca for two days <laughs> when um, Craig Van Dyke from the board of ORCID called and said, I understand uh, you have a new role now and we need some help. Can you, uh, can you help us? I really knew almost nothing about ORCID when he called, I have to admit. I had heard about uh, ORCID being formed. And ORCID stands for Open Researcher and Contributor ID, in case uh, you, you don't know what that full name means. And I, I did give them a lot of credit for a nice acronym. I thought ORCID was really nice. And, um, I went to meet with the board in, um, in January, and they told me that they, were, they had hired a consultant to develop a business model. They thought it was a really good business model. They were well on their way. Then they made a presentation at a CNI meeting, I think um, last spring, a, a year ago in the spring. And um, they learned in that meeting that a membership model didn't work for government agencies. And government agencies can't become members of things. So that really um, startled them, and decide, they decided it would be really helpful to have someone talk to universities and find out if the business model that had been proposed would work for universities, or did universities have another uh, business model they preferred? Because this is to be um, a 501c3 organization. It is, um, it is made up, the board is made up of representatives from <coughs> funding agencies, uh, government agencies, uh, the library community, and the publishing community. And their mission, um, they have a long mission statement, but essentially their mission is uh, they will create a central registry of uh, unique identifiers for authors and contributors, thereby solving the disambiguation problem. And uh, they go on to say that their goal is to connect, to be a kind of Uber service. Um, Jay, Jordan, and I were joking this morning uh, that unique identifier is kind of an oxymoron since there are so many unique identifiers uh, floating out there. Uh, but th their plan is to have this overarching service that allows local systems, whatever they are using, to connect to this overarching system and um, we will all know exactly who this author is. Um, so I, I want all of you to, to understand fully 
that I am not representing ORCID, I am not selling ORCID, uh, I'm simply reporting on the results of our survey. Um, we decided that in order to, to figure out if this business model was acceptable to people, um, we needed to make a series of phone calls. We agreed on a number. And I, I also want to assure you that this is a non-scientific, non-random sample, non-everything-you-can-imagine kind of study. Um, simply put, I called all of you, and I said, um, I'm trying to find the person on your campus who knows something about how you are managing identity systems. The most interesting part of this study is that to a person, um, these, these were the typical reactions. That's a really interesting question. I should know the answer to it, but I don't know who's responsible on our campus. Or, we're so decentralized, we have so many people who are working on this, I can't give you a single name. Other people said, I'll get back to you. <laughs> but all of you were terrific. I, I couldn't, I simply could not have figured this out on my own because there, there really aren't uh, central locations on campuses for this kind of work. Lorraine was wonderful at uh, the University of Kansas. She ended up putting together a whole room full of people uh, for me to talk to. And what happened in this study is that I went from one person to another to another to another. So I thought I would be making um, 20, 25 phone calls, and I made many, 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 many phone calls in order to figure out what was actually going on on, on the campuses. Um, on campuses where there's a medical school, <laughs> there are completely different operations. Um, in general, and, and I, am, I, I should also say, we submitted the report to ORCID on April 1st. The board of ORCID meets on May 16th or 17th in Boston. Um, so I am not, I'm not really talking about the results that we submitted to ORCID because ORCID has to accept those results and then decide if it's going to distribute the report or not. I don't know what they will do with it. Um, but I thought it would be interesting to talk to you about identity systems in general and uh, what I think libraries might do to take a leadership role on the campus. Because what became really clear is that um, there were two kinds, uh, institutions fall into two categories. There are those that want to buy something plug it in, and forget it. So uh, companies like Academic Analytics um, have, have sold systems to a lot of universities. And um, in talking to several provosts, uh, the response was, we need, uh, we need to know who has published what. We need to be able to look at productivity of our faculty. We need to be able to track faculty activity going back to institutions before they came here and going through institutions they'll go to after they've been here. We need help of figuring out Asian names, particularly. Um, is this park or Kim the same park or Kim uh, in uh, 50,000 other articles? We, we need that, but we don't want to spend a lot of time thinking about it. 
On the other side, there are um, universities that are thinking very hard about um, analytics of all kinds. They're developing systems on their campuses. They want to control that system. Um, they want to be able to put data in and take data out and run the kinds of reports they want to run. And uh, so they want a system they have a lot of control over and, and develop. I think that's next, next door, door, but... Um, But one of the the most um, one of the most telling things to me when I was talking to the board of Orchid, uh, they uh, they kept assuring me that they did not want this to be seen as a library matter. They wanted this to be viewed as a as a university issue. They did not want uh, the membership fee for ORCID to come from the library budget. They wanted it to come from the university budget. But when I looked at what's happening on university campuses, the only place where this issue is really understood is in the library. The directors of research don't actually get this. <laughs> um, Provosts are um, aware of it, but would like to keep it over here somewhere. And um, the, when I looked for um, instances of success with the use of ORCID or implementing ORCID, it was at a health science library where the librarian had taken this on as a cause and was using the system to develop a data management system for his institution. So it occurred to me that uh, <laughs> this is an opportunity for libraries to think about this issue. I'm. There was to be a session um, following this one where Cliff Lynch was going to talk about identity systems generally, and I was feeling so happy about that because I think it's really important that this whole issue be discussed thoroughly by this community. Um, but Cliff was caught in the, in the storms and can't get to Chicago, so I think you get coffee instead of Cliff this morning. <laughs> But um, so I'll do a little bit of, of thinking about this broader issue with you, and then I hope you will help others think about it too. Uh, the university's interest in identity systems is to you know, track faculty publications, to uh, find a standard way to submit proposals to funding agencies, particularly government agencies. Uh, they're interested in benchmarking productivity and um, developing uh, university analytics of various kinds. For the researcher, um, the uh, the advantage is, you know, if if a system like this worked, you would have one identity number that you use for everything, and you wouldn't have to figure out what am I supposed to do with this particular uh, grant application or report to the university. It would be a relatively easy way to create uh, bibliographies of your work to present to whatever forum you needed to present it to. But in, it's in the library where this issue has been dealt with for decades, if not centuries. We actually know something about identity systems. We've been using them for a long time. We know how to link them. 
Uh, we know how to produce bibliographies from them. But it, um, it's hard, I think, for us to make our knowledge better utilized on the campus unless we get involved in these issues at the campus level. There are uh, some serious issues with identity systems. Now, going down to the article level and tracking uh, faculty productivity from year one to year end uh, makes a lot of faculty very uncomfortable. They don't think this is such a great idea. Um, there are also uh, questions about what the university would be doing with this information. And even though it's supposed to be for submitting proposals and uh, just keeping track of who's who, uh, there are a lot of things that could be done with this information if, if collected universally. There are also systems that are being developed in other parts of the world. ORCID is supposed to be an international system. And I, I did talk uh, in, my, in my telephone calls, I talked to European, Asian, and North American institutions. The um, ISNI, the International Standard Name Identifier, is uh, developing a lot of momentum, particularly in the UK and in other parts of Europe as well. In Asia, there is very little understanding of um, the unique identifier issue. Uh, it was um, it was hard to explain what this was all about to some of the institutions I talked to. So what, what are, the question I would pose for you is what is our interest in this? Um, data management becomes a, an important issue on campuses when we uh, heard the uh, three panelists at the end of the day yesterday. The theme that ran through their presentations is um, we are developing all of these data. We're working with collaborators from many different disciplines. Our work is collected in new and interesting ways. Who will take care of this and manage it? Name identifiers is one important piece of it, but it's a pretty small piece. Um, is there a way that libraries can become more important in that data management process generally? And then I would ask, um, we have had name authorities in libraries since, uh, I don't know, since, uh, since God was a boy or something, and I don't know, a long time. Oh, the concern is that we've focused mostly on uh, authors of monographs for our name authorities, but can't we be expansive enough to maybe do a little better than that and build on what we already have? Uh, we've, we've invested an enormous amount of money in authority files in libraries. And how are those fitting into these systems is a question I would ask. And um, <coughs> finally, I would ask a, a question of all of you that was asked by many uh, people I talked to. Well, how many separate institutions organizations, I shouldn't say institutions, how many separate organizations are we going to support 
as a library community. So here is another organization uh, that is being formed that, ha that will require infrastructure. It will require people. And um, several librarians particularly asked, um, well, is there a way that some of these organizations can be combined so that the functions can be taken care of, but we don't have to create separate institutions? So I will, um, I will stop there. I, um, we can talk about anything you'd like to talk about, but that's, that's where uh, this study is. What we, uh, I will say one more thing. We, when we submitted our report, we described in great detail the conversations we had with each institution. And we said, A, no one has any basic disagreement with the business model. That was our, our question. You know, is this business model acceptable? Answer, yes. <laughs> Uh, we've seen this many times before. Uh, we do this all the time in universities. Uh, we support these kinds of things. Um, but there are major issues to be addressed. And I told them in the report that the first problem you will have is finding the right person to talk to on the campus. And you need to be ready to invest a lot of time looking for that person. Um, and, but I went into great detail about each discussion and then posed a series of questions for ORCID to think about. Thank you for listening. Music was provided by Josh Woodward. For more talks from this meeting, please visit www.arl.org.